I'm Lincoln. Uh, I'm from the University of Toronto team. I'm here with a sort of retrofit of our old bike, uh, Vortex. It's a new shell, uh, lighter design. Uh, it's called Cyclone. Um, and we're here to, I'm here to do a bit of sort of more training and get my uh, get experience in Battle Mountain. Um, we're not gonna be as quick as some of the camera bikes. Uh, as you can see, like our shell is not, not as uh, continuous over the top, but uh, give me a chance to get some practice riding, some experience in Battle Mountain and see how fast we can get it. I'm Rashab, I'm co-captain of the U of T Human Powered Vehicles. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, and so this is Cyclone. Uh, it's a monocoque shell, so the the frame is built into the fairing. Uh, so that makes it very light uh, while still being strong. Um, the way we built this bike as well as Vortex is with a modular drivetrain, so you can just undo this quick release and pull this whole thing out so it's very serviceable. Like we've got a two-stage drivetrain, uh, we've got both our brakes on the front, so we've got a rim brake and a disc brake on the front for more stopping power. The shifting is just regular cable derailleur, all, this is also a mechanical um, disc brake. We, we prefer mechanical disc brake because we don't want the fluid in a hydraulic disc brake to boil at high temperatures. Oh, that's what you're saying about the fluid. I was yeah. wondering why. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's... What's your name, sir? Let's not leave you out. Yeah, my name's Calvin. I'm the uh, I'm the other co-captain of uh, the, the Toronto team. How we often run a lot of our projects is that we'll break it down into various kind of subsystems or um, component or yeah, subsystems or aspects to the bike and then sort of assign those a little bit to different groups of people. However, it is fluid in the way that there are a lot of larger manufacturing tasks that go into this that require all hands on deck. Um, Actually, so, how many people on this team? Uh, this it, massive? Yeah, maybe um, probably around 20 so overall. Nice. Around 20 overall. This particular bike we've first built for the ASME competition in 2016. And so one of... One of um, uh, when I joined the team in 2015, one of my first tasks was Athens, up. Ohio? It was Athens, Ohio, yes. Well, the um, viewers of the Laidback Bike Report will remember that we were there covering that, and uh, that was one of my first events to cover, so that was great. Yes, I saw you guys there. Yeah, and in this, in this case, we have our, as it's a monocoque shell, we have our reinforced um, uh, roll cage with structural foam, um, uh, over, over this enclosure here, and um, that's more than enough clearance to keep the rider in place, especially when they're seat belted and everything. Safety, yeah, there are, now you can see the big bar coming across. Yeah, the structural foam in here adds thickness, so then once we lay carbon over it, it's a very thick cross section and it's got a lot of stiffness, uh, and that adds a lot of rigidity to the structure. And then these latches, which are bonded in there, are used to to put the hatch on. And yeah, so yep. here's the hatch on. A, uh, a, 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 a new, newer retrofit that we installed for this competition due to the higher speed nature. Um, so yeah, f uh, four latches corresponds to the four um, uh, the four attachment points on the inside of the hatch. Okay. This is the first vehicle I was involved with, and my kind of introductory task to the team was actually designing lights. So huh? uh, we don't have them on this time, but um, uh, we. Um, yeah, uh, we designed and cut these lights out of um, out of acrylic, and um, they have inserts in the back for LEDs. As for the ASME competition, this is a requirement, and we had um, we had fairly strong headlights um, and uh, turn signals built into the front and back. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for the tour. No problem. Thank you for That's a great way to send you off with the motorcycle going in the back here. Right, show me what you show me what you're holding there, Lincoln. Uh, these are my shoes. Obviously, shoes are very important in a streamliner because any foot movement and you're out of whack and you hit the side of your shell and you're completely off, so. Right, um, locked in, yeah. it gets you the most energy Absolutely. and no, least and energy off. Especially with me, I have very large feet. My, my heel and toe clearance uh, is under uh, under a half inch. So now, quarter. are you an engineering student as well? And I just am. are into this? Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I'm a sec uh, going into my second year uh, at U of T. Um, I actually did a lot of the work to get the bike ready to go this time. Uh -huh. uh, it was built, like, as they were talking about earlier, back in 2016. Um, but over the last, uh, this summer sort of, last couple months, um, put a lot of work in. Uh, there was a couple structural layups we had to reinforce. A um, bunch of drivetrain work, a little bit of uh, outer shell work. Some of it still needed to be done. Um, but the bike's in a state to be good to ride, so I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I am an engineering student as well. 
Uh, I'm not a trained rider. I've been doing training this summer to prepare for this and uh, get experience on the bike, so I'm uh, able to ride here. But yeah, I'm an engineering student working on the bikes just like them, part of the design team. Lincoln, thanks a lot. Good luck to you, pal. Absolutely, thank you. It's important to know that Trey and I would not be able to be here at Battle Mountain covering this for you without some amazing sponsors who have uh, supported us in, uh, in our trip here to Battle Mountain. Who are those guys? Well, Cat Trike, TerraCycle, EcoCycle, Connecticut Yankee Peddler. Sun Seeker, Azub, and our pals at Wiz Wheels.